full to create. Point 12. So one of the focuses of this release is doing more with 2D imagery. So just getting you with your webcam, your images, your videos into the 3D world. So here uh, I've built a little uh, kind of uh, stage set out of three images. And so, yeah, this is just a webcam, webcam placeholder. So the first thing here is that we have an element that's just suited just for getting your stuff into the world. It's called the surface. And here it is. And so the first thing to say about the surface is that it respects transparency. So I'm going to take that one at the back. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it. And now I'm going to bring it to the front. And so I'm using the gizmo feature that's also new in point 12. And now this surface we can set to a PNG that I've got in here that is transparent. And so already that's looking nice in 3D. So that's just a transparent PN PNG. You can make those in your image Im image editing program, make frames and all sorts, but uh, we can do more than that. So I've got this uh, sur these two surfaces on the side. And so I can set, I'm gonna set these to a different visual source. So I've got that webcam, but on these, you can see that there's some transparency too. And so we have uh, in point 12, we've got a whole new kind of image keying, masking kind of thing going on. And so on this visual source, it's just a webcam again, but here I've got an image key on it. I've added this image key and I'm using another visual source as the mask. So that's just a black and white image that's masking it off. And so, yeah, so all of a sudden, you know, that this we've got this whole kind of thing that really truly exists in 3D, but we've built it just out of simple flat images. So next, you can see I'm uh, abusing, I've got my little jerry-rigged camera system here. I'm just, uh, I've got kind of some dummy elements and I'm clicking on them to move the camera to them. So we've been working with uh, DJ Yoda and here he is uh, mixing. And, uh, and so we need to key him out. He wants to appear in front of the visual output that he's scratching. So how do we do that? We have got a human segmentation thing. So this will, using machine learning, find the person in the visual source and key them out. So there we are, we can see it's pretty good. And you can see, actually, if you look down in the corner, there we are, that's me. I've got, that's a webcam running with uh, human segmentation on it too. But uh, machine learning, look, it, it can't be perfect in these things. And as you might have noticed, Duncan actually has got a little green screen behind him. So let's see if we can use that. So we're gonna add a behavior. And so now we've got a chroma key. And so the way I find to use a chroma key, so this, the hue will find the color and the tolerance is kind of the smoothing around that. So slide the, the hue slider around till it just homes in on the color you want to take out. So there we are, we've got it perfectly. Do that with the tolerance down at zero. And then you just bring the tolerance up just until those crunchy green edges kind of go away. But don't do it too far because otherwise things will start going semi-transparent. So it's just just about there. But you can see that's a, it's a very nice key. Problem is, of course, we can still see his room. But we know how to fix that because we can add an image key to that. So we can just mask that out. There we are. It already has, it was already set to this visual source here, which is something, just a manual mask I made in a black and white image in my kind of image editor program. So there we are. So that's, so now, you know, here we can put Duncan into a 3D kind of stage set, into a 3D world around him. We could have audio reactive generator elements. We could have his big screen behind him. So that's good. Now let's go across to our next thing. Now everything so far, we've been taking 2D images and putting them in 3D, but we've kind of been keeping them as those flat images. In some way, they're not kind of natively 3D. And if you look at this, you can see that this is a bit different. This is that same webcam placeholder image, but you can see that this is somehow, 
more in 3D. So the, we turned the pixels into dots. So if I go to dot cloud, which is what this new element is called, you can see I can change those dot sizes from something really small up and up. But the real thing here is that we can play with a displacement slider. So this is uh, at, so the way this is working at the moment, it's uh, taking the displacement from the brightness of each pixel. You can imagine there are ways that we're going to take this in the future. Um, but yeah, let's, I mean, so this, uh, let's just explore how we can use this artistically for a moment. So you've seen this with the webcam uh, kind of placeholder image. But uh, I commute in, I mean, I work remotely, but I commute into the office every now and then. So I have these kind of early morning, late night trains, and I look like looking out the train window. And so here you can see, this is just that sideways scrolling out of the train window, passing through stations. But look, you know, we can really ramp up the displacement and you can start to be in it. And also if we just bring that back, you can see that we've kind of got all these black pixels here that we've still got this kind of rectangular frame in the space, which is kind of somehow, yeah, we, we, we want these pixels just to be, we don't want them in that black frame. So what we could do, this would be a good time for a luminance key, a luma key. Uh, so I need to add that to the source. So here's the visual source. So here we are. I've got a Luma key on it and I'm just going to turn up that threshold for keying out. So it's just going to take out anything that's below almost black. So it's going to take out total black. And now all of a sudden we can see that, you know, we, we're kind of creating abstract 3D art, truly, just truly in that 3D space. And now what else do we have? So this this is me. Um, so this is this visual source down here. And that, and you can see here that this is another take on the kind of dot cloud uh, kind of idea. So this is an element that uh, early, early, early adopters will know as the chroma key billboard and more recent adopters will know as the volumetric effects. And so this is us doing volumetric effects to those, in this case, to what would be a flat 2D surface. And so one of the problems we've had with this before was that, yeah, you couldn't have it cut out. You couldn't have it so that the dots were just on you. And uh, another problem we've had with it was that it was introducing different colors. And so now the colors are locked to the, the colors of the source that, that you give it. But if you want, you can give it another visual source and now it will kind of, on some of these, it will take highlight colors from that. And it, we can get rid of that just by taking it back. So you've got all of these nice things to play with, quite like bubbles. So hello again. Let's make these bubbles go up, 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 up. Anyway, so, and another thing here is that with these image masks, let's maybe, um, let's set it back. Let's set the volumetric effect surface. Let's set it back maybe just to that uh, placeholder image we've, uh, we've seen so much. Now, I was masking with a still image before, but of course the, it, we're masking with visual sources so we can do anything. So. There's our Volta logo bouncing along. Let's add that as an image key. There it is. And so now you can see, you know, we're starting to get some really nice 3D things going on there where the trails and the particles. So that was a quick tour. We've been all through there. Ooh, come on. <laughs> anyway, so Volta Create 0.12, you can do a lot more with your 2D sources.